Hello everyone, so this, uh, I wasn't really expecting to make this video, but I just kind of wanted to because it randomly came up in my head and I really wanted to make it. So yeah, I decided to go and uh, kind of ramble about my uh, persona, Rai-chan, or his actual name, Ryu. Uh, originally his older name was Ryu-chan, but um, it's, now see it's now used as a nickname of sorts. So, before I really get into this, I just want to say if I sound kind of weird, it's because I'm kind of recovering from a sickness. I'm just on the edge of recovering fully, but I still have phlegm in my throat and it sucks, but yeah, it's just kind of something I have to deal with for now. Um, I'm going to go start with the ba just the basics. Uh, Ryu is just kind of this the little soft dragon boy. He often struggles with his masculinity a lot because people mistake it for a girl, of course. Um, this is what's known as a trap, I guess. Um, and Ryu is, is this kind of made for a reason because I often struggle with my masculinity as a transgender man and there's not a whole lot I can do right now considering the fact that my parents are homophobic and they try to indoctrinate me into you know their belief but it's you know I'm fucking trans so it's it hasn't really worked you know but I digress um Ryu is also pansexual meaning he loves people regardless of gender and Ryu's species is actually a blossom dragon and he inherited this from his dad the blossom dragon species uh, originates in uh, Japan and different parts of Asia, like China. And he met uh, his wife, which is Ryu's mom, who is um, who is white, and they had Ryu. So Ryu is a mixed race, uh, being uh, Caucasian and Japanese. Ryu is a musician. So he likes to make, you know, music, and I was really inspired by a music artist known as Sewer Slut. I love Sewer Slut's music a lot. I just, I think her music is so moving and it's melancholy, and I do enjoy, you know, sort of melancholy, uh, breakcore-esque music. He does have an album, which uh, I will get into a little later when we get to the backstory stuff. Ryu is, you know, generally a very polite boy, and he's very shy um, and very soft-spoken. Um, his voice inspiration was from the song Moment by Lil Death. Um, so yeah, let me, I'm gonna go move on to the backstory stuff. Um, anyways, by the way, if you want to see this information I'm kind of, you know, reading off of, I will leave a link to the site I have because I made a little wiki for him uh, using uh, Google Sites, so if you want to check that out, I'll have it in the description below if you're interested at all. But yeah, onto the backstory stuff. So I'm going to kind of split this up into um, different sections. So there's going to be the, you know, spoiler-free stuff, and then there's going to be the spoiler stuff that is kind of included with Ryu's backstory as of right now. The first episode is out and the dream segment is out, but I will only focus a lot on the first episode and I may be, be a little vague on the second episode of what happens. So yeah, and on to the spoiler free stuff. So Ryu had a friend named Anna who they was very, very close friends with uh, since they were four years old. Ryu's dad actually passed away from brain cancer while he was in middle school and Anna was there to comfort him and became very good friends. They actually met when they were four years old. Bond started to grow more and more and what really hit off, hit it off was actually the passing of his dad. So Anna was always there to comfort him and was probably one of the only friends Ryu had until in middle school when they met Olivia and Mia, who are going to show up in the backstory. So, 
What happened to Anna was that there's this kid named Ryan in middle school who was a bully and he was very awful. He was very awful. He, he bullied Anna to the point where she was pushed to suicide and that really left Ryu absolutely devastated, of course, because she was his only friend and, you know, he really loved her. He even started to kind of develop a little crush on her and he was absolutely devastated when she passed away. He blamed himself because he wasn't really sure how to handle the bullying. Ryan really only went after uh, people he had fallings out with who wronged him or he thinks have wronged him. So yeah, Ryu was very upset and he had to do something about it. I'm just gonna warn you guys, this content uh, right here is going to be a kind of disturbing uh, considering it involves uh, underage hookups. So I'm just gonna give you a warning here. Uh, Ryu used to have a an autoimmune disease. Uh, I haven't really given it a name yet, but it was eventually cured. It was going to be eventually cured by a vaccine. However, it was very expensive and, you know, his family is actually really wealthy. He was set to get a vaccine for this disease. Uh, diseases and, you know, certain things can be spread through having sexual intercourse. So Ryu uh, and Ryan eventually hooked up uh, just weeks away before Ryu was supposed to get this cure. And Ryan eventually did get uh, disease. So he was stuck with the disease. And then when Ryu got his vaccine, he was totally free from it. And of course, Ryan's very upset about this. Um, then this is going to be kind of this part. Uh, this next part is going to be kind of a spoiler zone as it talks about the backstory uh, episodes as a current day. So, uh, yeah, if you haven't seen the first episode, you probably should go watch it before you listen to this segment. Uh, anyways, in the backstory, Ryu works at a cafe, a maid cafe, and he also goes to high school now with his friends Olivia and Mia and then eventually uh, you know Ryu befriends Razazi and this is in the, his sophomore year of high school so eventually uh, this new person comes and his name is Solver. so Ryu and Solver meet and um, pretty quickly Olivia and Mia start to go weary of him because of what happened with uh, him and Ryan and they know what the kind of scars that left on Ryu so they're very protective over him and that's just so far is the kind of the back story as of right now the backstory usually is kind of Ryu you know kind of living with the trauma of Anna committing suicide and the fact that he had to hook up just to get revenge and he really regrets that and he sometimes feels bad about what he does what he did now uh this next part is the shipping stuff so yeah and i ship Ryu and Solver, so they're technically a gay couple i can't remember when i first started shipping them usually it's like you know you start thinking of a certain character and you realize oh Shit, I'm actually, actually really like this character and I'm fucking sipping for them. <laughs> and then eventually, you know, eventually in the backstory, uh, spoiler, sorry. Eventually in the backstory, they do end up getting together. Uh, in some AUs, like a weird core AU I have, um, Ryu, Solover, and uh, this other person, uh, Julius, are in a polyamorous relationship. Meaning they all love each other. And in some AUs, Ryu is actually a girl, like in certain AUs, like medieval AUs and um, uh, AUs where he is uh, generally a maid that works for a silver, either medieval or modern, it doesn't matter. 
I would be uh, talking about some of the lore here, but I I won't be reading all of it. Again, the page for him is down in the description if you are interested. Ryu does have uh, self-harm scars on his thighs. Um, they can't be present or past tense scars because um, usually they look old, like just lines on his skin. Ryu actually has uh, his own YouTube, uh, you know, kind of on a video sharing site where he posts his music and music videos. And all. Ryu is very affectionate, usually with his friends. Ryu can also make some dragon sounds, of course, uh, considering the fact that he is basically a dragon human hybrid. Um, Ryu's skin is also fireproof, including his clothes. And Ryu usually always discloses the fact that he is, in fact, a male to people who mistake him for being a girl. Um, Ryu does have some uh, unhealthy habits like nail biting, uh, picking at scars or scabs, picking his nose, kind of. Um, and usually his friends, when they catch him doing it, they always try to stop him because they know it's kind of damaging for him. Uh, yeah, that's just about all I have. Now, I want to go over his, uh, music. By the way, this is not my music. Again, this is music written by the artist Sewer Slut, and I recommend you go check them out. I will leave a link to the playlist of what the album is, and I also have a link in the, uh, site page. Ryu's album consists of nine songs, and I'm going to read out the actual titles of the music here. So the first song is Mr. Kill Myself. The next one is Pretty Cunt, Down the Drain, Probably End Up Dead in a Ditch Somewhere, Nero's Day at Disneyland Remix, Make Me Sad, Junko Loves You, New Love, Bring Me to the Horizon, Drown, Sewer Slut Remix and all the joy in life was gone once you left. So these are kind of the songs Ryu makes throughout his backstory uh, to cope with the fat, cope with his um, trauma from what happened with uh, Anna and Ryan. He really loves making music. He can make it. Um, he usually takes time to think about what he wants to make, but sometimes he really know, already knows what he wants to make. And sometimes he already has ideas of what music he wants to make and what it's based off of. Um, now I want to talk about Ryu and some other AUs. So, there's a Swap Ryu, actually. And, uh, Swap Ryu is, um, basically, it's Ryu and Ana Swap. So, Swap Ryu, uh, generally has the appearance of someone who looks mellowed out, is very calm, very laid back. But they act like a yandere sometimes for people uh, they love. Uh, mostly Silver, of course. You know, she has to uh, protect him from uh, things uh, she considers dangerous. There is also a genderbent version of Ryu, and the genderbent version is actually a girl that is so masculine he is mistaken for a guy. Again, there's weird core Ryu, but I'm thinking of making a series for that uh, sometime in the foreseeable future. I don't know what's going to happen, but we also have a Ryu core aesthetic. In the site, there is also a document for more information, and there is also more information in my Discord server about it. Please join the Discord server. The, but I will just read the uh, basic description of the Ryu Core aesthetic. The Ryu Core aesthetic is mainly focused around elements of nature, wanderlust, nostalgia, so softcore aesthetic things, specific elements of weird core, dream core, trauma core, and vaporwave, small animals like baby ones, flowers, pastel things, sunsets, sunrises, and other things related to these. Now, before I end this video, I just want to say thank you so much for. <laughs> The amount of subscribers we've had, I've never reached this amount in my entire life, and I've had, uh, you know, multiple accounts, and, you know, this one, I figured I'd make it big by using this one, 
which used to be a Gotcha Life channel, but yeah, we've hit 266 subscribers, which I think is really amazing. Um, I really thank you guys. And also, I have social medias, so if you want to go see see what that's all about, I I also have a Patreon, which uh, has different perks there, exclusive perks for people who are Patreons. And I also have a Discord server. Uh, you know, you can chill. You can chill there. We're really chill. We promise. Um, I also have. I also have a Wattpad, which I have not used in a while, so if you want to go on there and see all the old shit I've written, you know, all the really terrible fanfics I've written of my character, uh, yeah, go, go ahead, go, go check it out, go check it out, yep, and I just want to let everyone know that if we do hit 1,000 subscribers, I will make a pick crew. Yeah, I will make a full, you know, finished pick crew of my art style so yeah um hopefully we can make it there um i'm hoping to make it to about maybe 500 by the end of this year i thank you all for your support you know all the nice things you've left in comments and we also have a fan art feature here so these are drawn by a friend of mine i will have um their instagram linked in the description uh, go check them out. <laughs> I can't thank them enough for drawing me all those cute pieces of Ryu. Hopefully, I'll see you in either a speed paint or another episode of Ryu's backstory. Um, thank you for watching.